Hey everyone, and welcome to the second and final part in making a top-down shooter game in Scratch. Today, we'll be adding the AI because we didn't have time to finish it last episode. So make sure you check out the first episode to code the base of this game, as well as to get all the assets needed for this game set up. Don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing, but anyway, let's get right into this tutorial. We need to work on the enemies. So inside of the enemies, add a wind green flag click and then a hide block right here. Next, let's go ahead and add a winner. I receive start game, a wait 0.5 seconds, that way it doesn't spawn the enemies immediately, a forever loop, and then a repeat here. Now let's just repeat 8 to 12 times. So this is just how many enemies we're gonna make. Now all we need to do is create a clone of myself. Then we just want to put a wait until. We'll fill out the parameter later once we have the necessary variables and stuff. Now in the beginning, after 0.5 seconds, 12 clones are created. Cool. Now we need to go ahead and make a tick loop for the enemies. So in the backdrops, make a new message called tick enemies. Now inside the enemies, when I receive the tick enemies, we want to go into the player and pull this go to the x minus scroll x into the enemies and then just put that right here and last but not least in a winner start as a clone we want to go ahead and set the position correctly go to x negative 250 to 250 so that way it spawns randomly on the x and y and we'll do the same exact thing for the y then we'll wait zero seconds go to front and then show make sure we switch costume to the base enemy right here and now a bunch of squares will randomly appear on the screen and let's make sure they work with the scrolling if we show scroll x and move it here we go look at that the enemies move with the camera as well so now that we kind of have the enemies popping up let's make the camera follow the player so go back into the player we're kind of hopping around sorry about that it's kind of hard to do everything in perfect order make a block called move camera now run that right after the player move now we just need to move the scroll x to the x which is the position of the player so change the scroll x by a times and then a minus this is the same thing we did in the gun. So we want to do the desired position x, its current position, scroll x, times a number smaller than 1. I'll do 0 0.1 maybe, and then duplicate this and change the scroll y by the y minus scroll y times 0 0.1. You can now see that if we start this game, look at this, when we move around, it actually moves the camera with us. When I start the game, sometimes the enemies spawn extremely close to the player, which would be very unfair. So let's make sure that when we spawn in the enemies, it kind of moves the enemies back from the player. So all we need to do is go into the bullet and pull this move steps into the enemies. And now we can use this block right here. We just want to first point towards the player and then move negative 200 steps. And also make sure you go to the X and Y right here. So now you can see that when we start the game, all the enemies are pointing towards the player and they aren't close to the player. And you can adjust the amount they move back as well. Now let's make it to where if they're off screen, they will turn into icon. Otherwise, they won't turn into the icon and they won't rotate towards the player. What we need to do is get the ID of the enemy. So make a variable called ID like so. And then in the beginning here, set the ID to sprite. When I start as a clone, set the ID to make a new variable called new enemy ID. And then set the ID to the new enemy ID. Basically, whenever we create a clone of the enemies, we set the ID to whatever we want. So I'm just going to name this like base enemy. When I receive this, make sure that the ID equals the base enemy. Then we want to make a custom block called go to with a colon, then an input X and Y. Go ahead and pull this script into there and then run go to right here and put these inputs in there. And now all we need to do is go to X and Y. Make sure you also do the go to right here. So all we need to do is go ahead and point towards the player. And then we want to set a variable that will keep track if we're on screen or not. So make a for the sprite only variable called on screen and make sure that's for the sprite only and then set that new variable on screen to the round x equals the round x position and duplicate all of this and do round y equals the round y position so basically that just means if this stuff is true then it'll set on screen to true otherwise it'll be false to make sure this worked inside the tick loop here let's go ahead and just do say on screen so you can now see that 
that all these say false because they're off screen, but if we walk towards one of them, this one says true. So you can go ahead and get rid of that now. Now underneath the go to, we can check if on screen is equal to true, set the rotation style to left right, otherwise set it to all around. Then we can go ahead and switch costume to icon here and switch costume to the base enemy here. And oops, I did it wrong. This one's icon and this one's base enemy. Now let's position the icons a bit better because they're on the edge of the screen there. So it doesn't look very good. So all we need to do, move 24 steps forward, put the costume first. That way it's a little bit neater. So you can now see that when they're off screen, there we go, it's not crunched up on the edge. And then when we walk close, there we go, they pop in. And now underneath here, let's do a move three steps like so. Now if we start the game, you should see that all the enemies start moving straight towards the player. Awesome, look at that, they're following me. Now there is an issue here. If I kind of go in a circle, there we go, look at that, they all clump up into this one blob of enemies. So let's fix that by adding some basic AI. Make a custom block called collision and then click OK. Now run collision right after the movement. Now this is actually super simple. All we need to do is switch costume to the collision, which if you remember is this sprite right here. So if the enemy is moving in this direction, the collision shape that we made is right in front. So switch costume to collision and check if we are touching another enemy. Now we can't actually put the enemies in here, so go into a different sprite and do touching enemies. And now pull that into the enemies. And now we have this block. So if we're touching the enemies, then we can move negative three steps, which will make it move backwards. Now I don't want to have to keep putting in all the same number here. So let's make a variable that'll store the movement speed. So make a for the sprite only variable called move speed like so, and set that to three in the beginning. Then here, move the move speed, and then here, move zero minus move speed. So you can see now that all these turn into these weird looking line things. That's not good. That's because we need to switch costume to base enemy. Now that's going to override the icon image as you can see. So we need to store a variable for the costume. So make a for the sprite only variable and call it costume. Right here we can set the costume to base enemy and then right here we can set the costume to icon. Then after we've done the collision we can just switch back to the costume right here. So now you can see that when we're off screen it's the icon and when we come close it's the enemies but they no longer bunch up to each other. As you can see if we go in a circle they'll kind of move around each other. Okay so let's make these enemies have health and be able to be destroyed by the bullet. So make a for the sprite only variable called health like so. So now in the very beginning set the health to 5. In a forever loop right here check if we are touching the bullet. Then we want to make a new block called damage and this will run whenever we get hit. So now we can just run the damage. Then we want to wait until we are not touching the bullet. That way it doesn't happen again. Clear the graphic effects. Now for the actual damage what we want to do is change the health by negative 1. Change the size by 15 and set the brightness effect to 25. Now if the health is less than 1 then we can go ahead and hide and delete this clone. The reason we have a hide in there is so that way it hides the time it takes to make the particles which we'll get to in a minute. But you can now see that if we shoot these five times one two three four five there we go it disappears now this looks pretty bad right now as you can see it kind of looks weird so first let's fix the bullet not deleting itself when it hits the enemy so in the bullet here add if touching edge or we are touching the enemy so now you can see that whenever we shoot an enemy it deletes the bullet as well as damaging the enemy okay let's also fix the weird size issue so inside the enemies right by the switch costume do do a change size by how much health it has. That way it gets smaller when you damage it. So add a 0.1, then a minus, then its current size in the right, and its desired size here. For its desired size, let's do health times 25. Then we want to add on a minimum size. That way it can't get too small. So we'll do health times 25 plus a certain amount here. So make a for the sprite only variable called minimum size like so, and now plus minimum size like this. Now in the very beginning, you can set that minimum size to whatever you'd like. For me, I'd like to set it to 25. So you can now see that when these enemies spawn in, they look like a good size. And when you start shooting them, they get smaller and smaller. Then once they finally get small enough, they actually just delete themselves. Now, a little issue here is that we can actually shoot these enemies off screen, which looks really weird. So what we need to do is check if we are touching the bullet and the on screen equals to true. So you can now see that we can't shoot those icons. It does nothing. But once they get on screen, we can damage them all we'd like. 
Now there's an issue with this. Once we clear out all the enemies, nothing happens. It kind of just ends. So let's make it to where once we clear the enemies out, it'll make a new batch of enemies. So make a variable called enemy count or all sprites and set that enemy count to zero in the beginning and also set it to zero on the when I receive start game. Now in a when I start as a clone, go ahead and change the enemy count by one here. And then when the enemy gets deleted, change it by negative one. So if we show the enemy count, as you can see, it's zero. And then when we start shooting these enemies and deleting them, here we go, it starts ticking down. So now we keep track of the total amount of enemies. In this wait until, check if the enemy count is less than one. Now it'll just start back at the beginning. So really quick, let's test this out. Alrighty, so these are the last two enemies. I clear this one out and look at this. Here we go. A bunch more enemies spawn in. Alrighty, and now let's make a score variable for all sprites, of course. Oops, I misspelled that. And now go into the player and set the score to zero in the beginning right here and double click this and then put that in the center of the screen. You can go ahead and change the X to zero on the player and then move it to the center. Try to just eyeball it the best you can. That looks pretty good. And then in the enemies, change the score by like 10 right before we delete it. Now you can see that when we shoot them, here we go, we get some score. Now this is a little bit unfair to the enemies because we can phase right through these enemies and literally nothing happens. Right in this tick loop, at and if we are touching the player. I'm sorry, we actually want to put this in the if on screen is true. Then we just want to broadcast restart. You can now see that if I touch the enemy, it should restart the game, but oh my, something really bad happened there. What's happening is we didn't actually delete any of the old clones and then it just duplicates them. So inside the enemies, add a when I receive start game, delete this clone and pull this into the bullet as well. That way it clears out old bullets. Pull this into the player as well. That way it it gets rid of the old eyeball. Now the start game happens after the initiation so we actually want to change this to in it player and now you can see because we have this wait zero seconds when we start it clears everything out everything still works but if we touch them it restarts the game and everything works perfectly. You should also see that if we have some score like right now I have 20 we get restarted there we go we have zero points. Okay so now that we have the main gameplay loop let's add some polish by making particles. Okay so in the particles add a wind green fly click top Hide. Then when I receive start game hide and then make a new list called new particle. Now delete all that list and add blank and blank to new particle and also delete this clone. Now when I start as a clone we want to go ahead and go into the bullet and pull this tick into the particle. Now we want to set the x to the item 1 of new particle and set the y to the item 2 of new particle. So after we position it we can wait 0 seconds and show and then we we can go to back so that way it's not in front then in the tick player let's add an if we are touching the edge then we'll delete this clone now let's go into the enemies and right before we delete itself make a new block called particle and run without screen refresh and now we put that in there and it will run this custom block all we need to do is repeat a random amount between 10 and 20 times replace the item 1 of new particle with the x and then replace item 2 with y then we can create a clone of the particle. Now if we try this out, if we shoot an enemy down, here we go, look at that, a square pops in at its position. Here we go, let's test it again, there we go, pops in, and it scrolls correctly and everything. Now let's make those particles kind of explode out into a cool effect. So we need a variable for velocity, so just name this velocity like so, and set that velocity to pick random 8 to 12. Next we can clear the graphic effects and set the size to pick random 75 to 125 maybe 150 actually. Then we can point in a random direction between 1 and 360. Wait 0 seconds, move that down there, and then show like this. That way it sets it up and then shows. Now we want to repeat the velocity, change the velocity by negative 1, and then we need to make the move function. So go into the bullets and pull the move steps into the particle. Now we can just move the velocity steps like so. Then after we move, we can wait a random amount of time between 1 and 3 seconds seconds, repeat 10 times, change the ghost effect by 10 so it fades out, and then delete this clone. Okay, so hopefully if we start this game, when we shoot the enemy, it creates a cool effect of particles, and after a little bit, they kind of fade out, and it looks super nice. Also, if we go off screen and come back, there we go, they delete themselves to save up resources. So now we have a really nice particle effect, we have a score counter, and everything looks really nice. If we touch the enemy, it stops the game and restarts it. Awesome, and everything's 
seems to be working fine. I hope this tutorial helped you out. If it did, make sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing. But anyway, this has been Owen, and I am out. Thank you.